we're first going to begin by taking a photo of ourselves. Go up to the toolbar and you'll see an icon that has mountains. When you hover over it, it says insert image. You can click on that and go to camera. Another way is to go to the word insert up top, click on insert, scroll down to image, which is the first word under insert, and then scroll all the way down on the drop down menu <clears throat> on camera. Then your camera should open and what you're going to do is take your photo. Now, if you're creating a mask, you can do it from a front profile like this. If you're doing jewelry, you might consider, you know, turning your head this way and taking a picture. So since I'm going to do a mask, I'm going to go from this way and take my picture. And click. If I want to take another picture, or if I don't like this one, I can go ahead and take another picture. And blue box around the um, picture that is selected. So if I want this one, I'm going to click on it and then click the word insert. And then it, that inserts my photo. I'm going to expand my photo by clicking on the photo. And there are these little blue boxes all around my photo. I'm going to click and hold down my clicker. And then with my other fingers, I'm going to stretch it to enlarge it and make it fill up the slide. So we're going to stop right here, go ahead on slide number six, and insert a photo of yourself. I have um, a bunch of, I have two tools that I can use to create my mask. One tool is the shapes tool right here. When I hover over it, it's the circle and the square. It says shapes and the other one is the line tool. So one of the easiest ways to create a mask shape and remember masks can fill up the entire page. It, it can take up the entire face or they can do partial face. It doesn't really matter. So let's say that I want an entire face um, and I want it to be kind of mm, rectangular with there, here's a rounded rectangle. So I'll click on rounded rectangle and let's say I'm going to make it take up a majority of my face. Let's say around this much of my face. And I can adjust the shape of it by clicking on the blue rectangles. If I want to turn it because my face is kind of turned, I can click and hold on this little circle icon over here and move my fingers and that will sort of rotate it to fit the, sh the um, face angle. If I want to change the colors because I don't want this gray color, I can go to the fill bucket or fill color option. This only happens when you have the shape selected. So if I click off of the shape, notice there's no fill color. There's no paint bucket icon. But if I click back on the shape, you'll see that fill bucket, fill color option is right there. So I can click on that, change the color. If I want to change the outline of the color, I can click on this little pencil here. Let's say I want it black. Or if I want it thick black, then I'll go to border weight. Those are the three lines, the large, medium, large, medium, and small lines next to the pencil. I can click on that and then I can make it thick, like eight pixels, even thicker, 24 pixels, or thinner, three pixels. I like eight pixels. So this is how you get the base shape of your mask. Another option, let me move this off to the side, is to create your own unique shape for your mask. And that's going to be under lines. Now you can use lines to create cool different textures. One thing I would like to do is to um, create my own unique shape using the curve line tool or the polyline tool. So I'm going to first start by clicking the polyline tool and it gives me this plus cursor. So when I start, I 
click and then if I move my cursor, a little blue line is kind of attached and it's stuck on the spot that I first pressed. And now it's kind of um, falling along wherever I move my cursor. So when I click again, then that's another little spot added. And so I'm just going to click and move, click and move, click and move my cursor all the way around. Careful not to double click because double clicking will end the um, polyline tool. It will stop it. And also clicking too close to where you previously clicked will also end the polyline tool. So in order to end it and create a unique shape that I can fill in, my first and my last click need to be in the exact same spot. And there you can see I've created a unique shape. Now, if I want to adjust the shape, because over here I wanted it to be a little bit more even, I can double click on it and you'll see purple dots will appear. I can click and hold those purple dots and stretch them to adjust the shape to be a little bit more the way I wanted it to be, um, even if I wasn't able to do that initially. And you can use the same technique for the curve line tool. Curve line is right here. Curve line tool, polyline tool, they're the same, except curve line is a little bit more curvy. Now to get it off of the dots, all I have to do is click off of the shape. And now I can use, um, the fill color tool to create um, a color that I like. Now, the fill color option also has a gradient tool. So there's solid, like I colored this green, um, the, the rounded rectangle, a solid color. Or I can do a gradient one. And these ones add some value to it to make it look rounded. So that's kind of cool. Or I could create a custom gradient. So that's going to be right here under the gradient tab. There's a little custom option with a plus sign. Now when I click on that, there's a, there's two boxes over here. One of these boxes corresponds to this gradient stop color right here. So when I click on that, let's say I want it to be pink. So I can click on pink. And then I can click on this box over here and click that drop down menu and change it to, let's say I want to change it to this blue color. And that creates this unique gradient feature. I can even add more stops and add more colors. Now this is a radial color design. I can change the type to be linear by clicking on the drop down menu and clicking it to be linear. I can even change the angle. So this is what 45 degree angles look like. I'm going to go for the straight across and click OK. And then you can see I've created a unique color for my mask base. So what I would like you to do right now is to use either the shapes or the line tool to create your mask base or your, your jewelry base color. And then I'll teach you how to add shapes on top and duplicate those shapes to create a sort of unique mask or jewelry. So let's say that I am done with my base and I am ready to sort of add on some fun um, patterns to it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back in, choose some shapes that I think are fun. So let's see here. Um, this teardrop shape is pretty cool. So I'm going to pull a shape, the teardrop shape. I can adjust it. I'm clicking on this little uh, yellow diamond to adjust it. And then if I want to rotate the shape, all I have to do again is to click on the little blue circle. So I've rotated it. Now let's say that I want this, this shape and I want it to be identical. So what I would then do is make sure the shape is selected and press control C and control V. 
and that will do, that will copy and paste the shape. Another way I can do that easy is by pressing Control D, which will duplicate the shape. Now I want this shape rotated. So one thing I can do to rotate this shape is to right click, go down to the word rotate, and then I'm going to flip it um, horizontally. And that has it going in the exact opposite direction. Um, flipped horizontally over that um, 